Much like its predecessors, Fuzz would first manifest itself as a malfunctioning piece of studio equipment. This time, it would be in a 1961 recording session in the Quonset Hut Studio in Nashville. Glenn Snoddy was engineering a Marty Robbins session when a console channel started distorting. Grady Martin's baritone guitar just so happened to be plugged into the distorted channel. They liked the resulting tone enough to feature it in Marty Robbins' single, Don't Worry. The song was a hit, and soon many musicians were approaching Snotty asking him to reproduce the distorted tone. By then the console had been repaired, so Snotty designed a transistorized circuit that emulated the sound. That circuit would eventually be sold to Gibson and distributed by Maestro as the Maestro Fuzz Tone. Unfortunately, the Fuzz Tone wouldn't sell many units during the first few years of its release, partly because it was such a novel concept. Maybe I'm not selling just how unusual the idea of the fuzz tone was when it was first being manufactured in the early 60s. Distortion for distortion's sake still wasn't a very popular idea, so Maestro marketed it as a sort of early synthesizer. Organ-like tones, mellow woodwinds and whispering reeds, booming brass and bell-clear horns, plus many, many more. Let's use an electric bass. This is a sousaphone effect. We'll use a thin-bodied electric guitar now, and the sound is that of a cello. It wasn't just a marketing scheme either. A quick skim of the patent reveals that the fuzz tone was designed to simulate the tones of trombones, trumpets, and tubas. Also mentioned in the patent was the fuzz tone's ability to be bypassed with a foot switch, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Foot switches on guitar pedals are ubiquitous today, but in the 60s, it was a unique enough development to be listed as an object of the invention. The fuzz tone truly was the first guitar pedal. Sales for the fuzz tone would take off in 1965 thanks to its use on the Rolling Stones hit single, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Soon, companies like Vox, Solosound, Moss Wright, Dallas Arbiter, Electro Harmonics, and many others would produce their own fuzz boxes, all based on cascading transistor amplifier stages. In the simplest of terms, transistors act like small amplifiers. A small electrical signal enters the input, and a larger copy leaves through the output. If more amplification is desired, just take the output of one transistor and feed it into the input of another transistor. However, the extent to which a signal can be amplified is limited by the supply voltage. If the amplified signal swings above the supply voltage, the top of the waveform is clipped. If the signal swings too low, the bottom of the waveform is clipped. That's how fuzz circuits distort the signal, by amplifying the input signal so much that it starts to clip when it goes above the supply voltage. To help me demonstrate, I made a clone circuit of the Dallas Arbiter fuzz face. The fuzz face has two transistor stages. The second transistor stage is where most of the distortion occurs, giving the circuit its signature square wave-like tone. Even though the second transistor stage is where most of the distortion is imparted, the first transistor stage adds some harmonics as well. The first stage is biased in such a way that only the bottom of the waveforms are clipped. This asymmetrical clipping of the waveform adds even harmonics, in addition to the odd harmonics which are normally generated, contributing even more to the circuit's signature tone.
Fuzz would go on to be the effect that defined popular guitar music for the second half of the decade. But in the early 70s, distorted tones would be revolutionized once again, thanks to the operational amplifier.